start and go ahead. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to hand it over to our NASA specialists who are here to teach us today. Go ahead, my friends. Thank you very much. Let me find Mr. DJ's here, right? Uh, sorry, I was in space. Uh, I just got mm -hmm. back to Earth. <laughs> it's funny why you didn't hear. I was like, where are you, Mr. DJ? Okay. Well, good. Uh, it's noon now. Good afternoon, guys. Ooh. Sorry, I was confused on what time it is. But we're really excited to talk with you today and to kind of let you know more about what it's like to live and work in space for astronauts. And so that is Mr. DJ, and he is wow. being silly and trying on some of our astronaut stuff. So right here's a map of all our NASA centers across the U.S. So we have so we have NASA all over, uh, doing lots of different cool things all around the all around our country. Um, and so right now, Mr. DJ is right over here. He's right outside of DC in Greenbelt, Maryland. <laughs> He's so funny, Mr. DJ. Uh, so he is not in space. A lot of times people ask, like, are you in space, Mr. DJ? But he is not. He is in our museum at our visitor center at Goddard Space Flight Center. So um, even though he's not in space, the museum is close to the public, so he has the whole place to himself today. So he doesn't have to share, he doesn't have to take turns, he can play with all the exhibits and run around and nobody's telling him to stop. So he's still having a pretty fun day, you know, if, if I might say so myself. And he's playing with our astronaut stuff too, so that's also fun. So we're going to talk a little bit about Goddard, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about Johnson Space Center here in Texas, because that's where we do all of our training for our astronauts. So this is a picture of Goddard. This is Greenbelt, Maryland. So this is just one part of where we are. So we have about 10,000 people who work here. So that means there's loads of different kinds of jobs and different kinds of things that you can do when you work for NASA. So right here in the middle, this is where we do all of our, uh, where we build everything and where we test everything before we put it into space. So this is a clean room. This is the biggest one in the world. It's eight stories tall. The air in here is cleaner than any hospital operating room. So we build all of our cool spacecraft and satellites in here and then we test them all here to make sure they can survive in any rocket launch. And then Mr. DJ is over here. The museum's just off of the picture you can see, but that's our rocket garden in the background. And so you can kind of go, yeah, Mr. DJ can go hang out with rockets right now if you wanted to as well. So he's still, he's having a good day. Don't feel bad for him, he's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but so we have loads of kinds of jobs. We have scientists and engineers. We also have people who do lots of cool stuff with computers. We have giant supercomputers here at Goddard. We have, um, we also have our own TV production. So we have a TV studio. So if that's something that's interesting to you, we're making podcasts or creating your own videos. We have lots of folks who do really amazing stuff with graphic design and artists who take information from our satellites and turn it into really cool stuff that, that we can understand. Because a lot of times information that comes from a satellite is all numbers. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. But then these really smart people take it and turn it into really cool like graphics and stuff. So there's lots of fun stuff going on at Goddard. All right. So. Raise your hand, guys, if you play any sports, if you play an instrument, if you like to sing, if you do any art, if you like to draw or color or dance, or if you play video games or any of those things. I see. If you, yes. if you figure skate. Yes, figure skate, hockey, all those things. Everything, any of the, yeah, lots of hands raised. Yes. So what do you guys have to do when you want to keep getting better at doing those things? So I know you're already pretty good. But what do you do when you want to keep getting better? Vanessa. You have to practice. Yeah, definitely. Practice all the time. Keep doing it. Keep trying, even if it gets hard. Practice and do it over and over and over again. And that's exactly what we have to do with our astronauts. So astronauts, before they ever go into space, do you, know, do you guys know how long they have to practice for? for two whole years, two years of practice before they ever go into space. So that means that by the time they're up there, they're like, I know how to do this, I'm good, I'm cool. So what are we looking at here, Mr. DJ, what is this? Well, when NASA's go out to do a spacewalk, when they go outside the space stuff, they do a spacewalk, they practice on Earth in a swimming pool. So that's a swimming pool down in Texas. It's called the Newton Buoyancy Lab. It's deep, very deep, deeper than any pool you've been to, about 40 feet deep. And inside the space day, uh, inside the swimming pool, sorry. See those rods in the swimming pool at Mass Point? That is the space station. So we got an exact copy that's in space in the swimming pool. So that's what can actually practice like they're doing a spacewalk. So that's not what you see. 
is wearing a spacesuit. You see in the front, there's like these, these weights. That's to make him sink halfway in the pool. Just like in space, you're floating. It's going to make him uh, float in the swimming pool. And there they are. You see the feet are not touching the ground. So they're floating in the pool like they'll be floating in space. And they're sitting on top of a round cylinder. That on the real space and that's in space is where they come out to start the spacewalk. Or when they finish, they go back inside when they conclude their spacewalk. And next to them, you see like there's four divers that are helping them do the practice. And if you look at the back of the divers, those yellow tanks are air tanks. Human beings need air to breathe. In the water, you need to bring your own air tanks. Now in space, you don't, you don't have any air. So you need to bring your own air tanks. So this, at the back of the suit, like a backpack, is where we keep the air tanks, just like the divers. So there's enough air for about eight hours of uh, doing a space walk. So yeah, so you can see uh, on the, the astronaut on the left, because he's being lowered down into the swimming pool. It's not like he just can jump into the pool. If you do that, wearing a spacesuit, you're gonna be tumbling and you won't be able to control yourself. So we slowly lower them on a crane so they don't uh, tumble over. And then they can practice in the swimming pool on the left. Yeah, so I know you guys are working on your multiplication tables, right? Okay, so for every one hour that an astronaut's gonna be out in space, they have to practice seven hours inside this pool. So let's say an astronaut knows that they're going to have to do 10 hours out in space. How many hours are they going to have to practice in this pool beforehand? So what's seven times 10? Sophia. What is it? Nice and loud, Sophia. 70. Yes, perfect. Yes, 70 hours. That's a lot of time, isn't it? But that just means, like we said before, that by the time they ever get into space, that they're like, I'm so it's good. I got this. Don't worry. Yeah, so 70. So in addition to practicing in the pool, they also spend a lot of time practicing outside of the pool, getting used to the different tools and the different things that they're going to have to do when they get up into space. So for example, I really love these two pictures up here. Well, for a lot of reasons, because I have a lot of questions about them the first time I saw them. I was like, well, what are we doing here? Why are we, so they're in a harness, if you guys notice. And so they're kind of hovering over what they're working on. But that's because when they're out in space and in, in the space station and outside the space station, uh, you have microgravity, which means there's like just a little bit of gravity. So it's like, there's no gravity basically. So what you have to do is you have to practice doing whatever job you're supposed to be doing, whatever project you're working on and knowing where your body is at the same time. Because imagine if we were just like sitting there eating our cereal and then you just like started to like, your legs just started to like float away from under you and stuff. Like you'd be like, oh my gosh. So you gotta get used to like holding on. So if you see here, she's holding onto a railing. We have those all up and down the outside of the space station and, in, and inside the space station. And we have tethers so they can connect themselves as they're moving as well. So we always know where we're going. Um, and if you see Mr. DJ has on the astronaut gloves, those are the actual astronaut gloves. They're kind of big and bulky, and it's kind of like the winter gloves you guys wear. So, you know, when it's cold outside and you have your gloves on and then like someone would say like, could you write your name right now? Like your name would probably look a little funny if you're trying to write it with your gloves on, right? Um, so they have to get used to practicing. And that's what you guys can do at home now if you wanted. You could bust out your gloves and start to practice with your Legos or with stacking stuff or like trying to cut with scissors or something. So you can already practice your astronaut skills if you guys would like. Well, you know, Miss um, Amanda, we do have a lot of gloves because we get a lot of snow here. So we are all going to try that tonight, boys and girls. You, One yeah. of your assignments is to put on a, a pair of your winter gloves and I want you to try to draw and write your name or I want you to try to build something tonight and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Yes, that'd be perfect. Since you guys are already training to be astronauts, that's all. Um, so they do the same thing. When they're practicing here on earth, they wear like big work gloves or big gloves so that they can kind of get used to that feeling. And also, cause they're gonna have like, this is a special drill that's made for them because of the huge gloves. And also cause it needs to be really strong because they're doing work outside of the space station, the same way you would do in a house or apartment or your school or a car. Um, you always have to kind of upgrade it. You have to keep it updated. You have to do repairs. And then we also have like experiments and stuff outside of the space station. This is what we're talking about. This is the space station. This is where all these astronauts are training to go. You want to tell us about it, Mr. DJ? So right now we have seven astronauts in space. So you see the middle part of the space station? That's the part where they sleep, they exercise, they cook the food, they do science experiments. So it's about the size of a six bedroom house. 
and on either side, just those wings, that's how we get electricity for the light switches and for the experiments. Those wings collect sunlight in the daytime and change it into electricity, they're called solar panels. So the astronauts are inside the middle. And if you look at it, this is taking, um, at the very end, there's a spacecraft. So we send astronauts from Earth to the space station and they join right at the very end. And this photograph was taken in the daytime. So you can see the Earth, you can see the clouds, you can see the oceans. See that dark blue line that separates the Earth from space? So guys, do you know what this is called? So what surrounds our Earth and protects us from the hot and cold of space and also gives us all the air we breathe and helps us to have life here on Earth? So it starts with an A. Do you guys know what this is called? Charlie. It's called an atmosphere. Yes, perfect. Yes, that's our atmosphere. And it's crazy how it looks so small and so thin, but that's the thing that makes the difference between us having life on Earth and not. So that's pretty cool, I think. So guys, can you show me with your hands what it means to orbit something? What does orbit mean? Yes, perfect. Yes, go, to go around something. Yes, so orbit. So we have the Earth and then our moon orbits our Earth. And so that International Space Station, it also orbits our Earth, except it goes much faster than our moon. So it goes around our Earth one time every 90 minutes. That would be like if we drove from California to New York in 10 minutes. Like, that's crazy fast, right? Like, I'd be dizzy. So what happens is we know that you only have sun on half Earth at the time, right? So half the world is at night, half the world's in the daytime. So they have 45 minutes in the sunshine, so 45 minutes in the dark, 45 in the sun, 45 in the dark. So they have a sunrise and sunset every, every, oh man, every 45 minutes. So 16 times a day, there's a sunrise and a sunset. So I would get dizzy. So they base their time out of Houston, Texas. So they're like, if it's 10 a.m. in Texas, it's 10 a.m. on the space station. Because otherwise, like I know me and myself as Amanda would get very confused. So who's seen a football field? Raise your hand. I know you have. If you've seen it on TV or in person. Everybody's hands should be raised. Yeah. Yes, so it's pretty big, right? It takes a hot second to run. Well, if you're not a football player, it would take Ms. Amanda here a few seconds, a little bit, to run from one end to the other one. So they're this big, right? It's huge. And so that's how, this is how big our space station is. It's as big as a football field, right, Mr. DJ? Yeah, and this is built by a lot of uh, people from a lot of different countries. So United States, there's a flag there on the patch that I might just point to. United States, Canada, Japan, Russia, and other countries, they all got together, they put their heads together and designed these pieces that you see on the, that make up the space station. So if you ever made Lego, you take pieces and you join them together. That's what we did with the space station. It took us 17 years to build a space station. It took us a long time, but we took each piece, launched into space, then launched another piece and then joined together. And so in size, about the size of a six bedroom house. So, it's a pretty big, but we pack it with a lot of stuff. I'm just going to show you that next. Yeah. So did you guys get a chance to see the videos beforehand? Did we watch the videos? We sure did. Awesome. So Mr. DJ is going to do a quick refresher just for some of our friends real quick. So if you look on the left, the gentleman's getting a haircut. So I went to the haircut a month ago. Now it's getting a little bit long. So I go to the hairstylist. They cut my hair with a trimmer. And any hair that's cut falls on the floor because of gravity. In space, there's very little gravity. So if you cut your hair with just a trimmer, it's going to float all over the place, the hair, the cut hair. You don't want that to happen. So we attach a vacuum cleaner to the hair trimmer. So I said, hair's been cut. All the hair that's been cut gets sucked into that big black container. It's a bag in there. And we collect it. And then later, we get rid of it. So it's a good way to uh, cut your hair. Otherwise, if you didn't have that vacuum, it'd be floating. And you might be having another astronaut come up open his mouth and he'd be swallowing someone else's hair. So don't want that to happen. So no, thank you. All the hair. yes. Mm -hmm. And on the right is the lady, Sunita Williams. She's been in space, I think five times. So you, you can go into space five times, which is a lot. She's in the bedroom part of the space station. This is the part that has four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, one bedroom to the bottom, one to the left, so one to the bottom, one to the right. And one above. Of course, this, I know. The top one you can't see in the picture. Yes. See how she's standing straight? She's not moving around. Because if you can see that blue strap up under the left foot, that's what we use to keep ourselves still. There's straps everywhere inside the space station. You just put your feet on it and you can remain standing up. Or you can go behind her. You see there's a blue bars on behind her? 
beneath, yeah. You can put your feet underneath there. Oh, there's blue uh, rat handles on the side so you can hold yourself. So if you want to stand still, put your feet underneath those bars and hold on um, the handles. And that's the bedroom. So all the four bedrooms are just like that. So you see, they don't sleep in a bed, they sleep in a sleeping bag. It's almost like going out camping. So you unzip the sleeping bag, go inside, zip it up, and then you put that little band, like a rubber band. It's like a bungee cord and there's two hooks. You hook it on either side and that keeps you from moving in your sleep. So you wake up in the morning, you're still where you were when you uh, went to sleep. But some of the astronauts actually take off that bungee cord and they float around in the sleeping bag and sometimes they're upside down. Sometimes so, but however you want to be asleep, you can do it. And um, sometimes they have a pillow, sometimes they have a blanket. And there's the, and there, I, what Matt is pointing to right now is a drink. So we don't have bottled drinks. We have uh, drink pouches, Capri Sun. As a metaphor, this is a strawberry drink. It has the powder in the bottom. So you just add water to the top, shake it, put a straw on your drink to the straw. When you finish, see the blue circle there? That's Velcro. So you see how that's attached to the ceiling? Uh, and there's a special straw that has a clip that when you finish drinking, you just, it's a clamp. You push on it and it prevents any drink, drink from leaking out when you're not drinking. And a man is going to point to those little white squares. Those are all Velcro place, uh, patches. So you just take a uh, flashlight you have there, put a piece of Velcro and stick it to the wall. If you don't, it's going to be floating all around the bedroom. You know, might be able to find it when you wake up in the morning, might be behind the computer. So it's good to Velcro everything because things do get lost a lot of times in space. So we use a lot of Velcro. And what are those monitors over there, Amanda? Yeah, so our astronauts are in space for a long time. They're usually there about six months as the average time. So you're there and you're away from your family and your friends for a long time. So for me, when I know I'm away from family and friends, I like to video chat, I like to message. Um, so we have internet up there. So it's not like regular Wi-Fi like we have down here, but they have a special satellite that provides internet so they can talk to family and friends, they can chat, they can send messages. We can also stream different TV shows and movies and like they get to watch the Super Bowl up there and like the World Cup and stuff. So like, cause it's important. Cause I, I know there's Amanda here. Oh, I did not kick my cat out of the room. I'm sorry guys. I hope he doesn't knock anything over. Um, so I lost track. Yeah, so they get to watch stuff. Cause I know for me in my own personal time, like, cause you work all day, you're gonna need a break, right? Like you guys need a break from school. Like, could you imagine if you had to like work in school like every day, all day? Like, I'd be a little grumpy. So they get to have some of their own downtime and they get to, you know, play with games and look at stuff on the computers and talk to family too. So I think that that's really important. And, and they also, a lot of them bring up instruments where they bring up soccer balls or football or things like, like they can't play exactly the same because they're floating, but they get to still have a lot of fun and enjoy themselves while they're up in space. Um, one of the areas that they like to go, so we don't have a lot of windows because it's a safety thing. Um, but so one of the, the coolest places to go look in is the Coppola and that's this area. And I know I would get in trouble because they'd be like, Miss Amanda, you need to go do work. And I'd be like, I am working, I'm watching Earth. So you, a lot of astronauts go and they can just observe Earth all day. So when we're looking up at the sky from, from the ground, we see the clouds and we see the blue and then we know the blue is the sky. But when we're looking down, the blue is ocean or water. Um, and then here in this one, it's kind of a little bit browner and you can kind of see in the edge of the window right here. Um, so this one, she's looking at ocean and, and clouds and this one we're looking at clouds and probably land because you can see a coastline right there in the edge of that picture. Um, but so like we said, since it goes around the earth every 90 minutes, they get to see a lot of our earth and see a lot of really cool things. So some of our astronauts will um, tweet photos like daily when they're up there from these, from these different windows to kind of go and so you can just sort of see what's going on, which I think is awesome. Um, you can eat your lunch there, you can hang out, you can actually do like real work there and do your job, but I'd probably get in trouble because I would just hang out a lot. So, all right guys, so let me know if you agree with me or not. If you agree with me, give me a thumbs up. I think the biggest difference between working on earth and living and working in space is the gravity. Do you guys think so too? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Let me Maybe see your true. thumbs. Everybody thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's see them. So for me, I definitely think gravity is one of the biggest things because it's just way different. Like, so if you notice these two guys, they're standing this way, they're working, they got their notebook. They're like, yeah, we're doing work. And here on earth, you would say like, excuse me, and like walk behind them. 
if you wanted to. But not this guy. He's like, excuse me. And he wee, just like soars right overhead because gravity isn't happening up there. So they, it's totally different. And it's just a, a different way of living and working. And I think that also, I don't know, it would take a little bit to get used to. So sometimes our first time astronauts, they take, they don't really work the first few days because they have to get used to how hard to push themselves and pull themselves along. So they don't like bump their head a lot because uh, they like push off too hard and they get, they, need, they hit their head on the wall. So they need to be careful. But so the lack of gravity or the, the very small amount of gravity means that we can do some really cool science up there in space. If you guys started talking about science and like observing stuff and and whatnot, I know you guys have, like where you're like keeping an eye on the weather or you're paying attention and regularly observing stuff. Does that sound familiar, guys? Is that, yeah, we've had some people go out and look at the moon recently because we did the phases of the moon, right? Cool, yeah, so you guys know. So they're doing science. So a lot of our astronauts, they focus on science or they're doing different repairs and things up there in space. So this astronaut here, what she's done is she's pulled this core. It's a piece out of a really uh, cool deep freezer that they have there. So they're able to see how different things act differently, different thing, how things act differently when there's no gravity. So like ice can form differently. Um, you know how snowflakes all look different and crystal. Have you guys ever grown, um, seen rock candy or grown crystals in a jar or anything like that? Yeah, Harper's got her thumb up. Awesome, Harper. Yeah. So like that, it happens and it like works a little differently when there's no gravity too. So that's one of the things they've been able to figure out. They've done a lot of cool stuff with medicine up there because they've been able to see what and how things react differently without gravity mess, um, not messing with it, but having, having a role in it. And so this astronaut here, like he's working on um, a material for a new type of tire for our cars as well. So they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff up there. Um, I love this picture. So she's not doing a virtual reality thing. What they're doing is they're uh, taking some measurements and testing her eyes because we need to check to see how the effects of space flight and the lack of gravity, what it does to the human body. Because it does change it. Like you get taller when you're in space. And like I said, um, so gravity isn't pulling down. Like here on Earth, gravity pulls us down. And so our sinuses are clear and our fluids are all going this way. But in space, like, you know, sometimes the astronauts, their faces get a little puffy and their noses are a little stuffy, but that's because the water is just more up in their face than it is. So they're always checking to make sure their astronauts are healthy and that having no gravity is okay for their body. So they're doing a lot of research on that to make it better um, and more healthy for our astronauts to be in space. So if you notice here, she has these stripes on her pants. So this is Velcro because when there's no gravity, when you set your pen down, it's not gonna be there when you come back because it is just gonna float away. So everything has Velcro and we use it to attach to everything. So um, I think that's cool. And then you also don't have to wear shoes when you're in space because you don't have to walk anywhere. Then they just get to wear socks and hang out and be cool all the time. Um, and then if you notice, you also don't wanna wear shoes because if your foot hits this and knocks some stuff out it'd probably break and that won't be good. But if you hit it with a sock, you probably have a better chance of, of it being okay, if that makes sense. So what are we looking at here, Mr. DJ? What's this? Next picture. <laughs> uh oh, so those are two space capsules. That's how the astronauts uh, leave the Earth, go to the space station, and the capsules. Here's a model rocket. So those capsules sit on the top, and this is the fuel tank. This is the fuel needed to fire the engines to go into space. Once there's no more fuel, we don't need this anymore. This comes back into the ocean. And the top part, which is the capsule you see in front of you is what remains of the rocket. And that flies, they both fly up to the space station. You see the one on the left has joined to the space station. That's a Russian uh, capsule called Soyuz. There's three uh, astronauts that go in that, there's three seats in there. And they join up to the space station and there's a little hatch, which you open up the vaults, pull open the hatch, and then there's another hatch that's the door to the space station. You open that and you float right in. And that capsule on the left, the, Ru the Russian capsule, stays joined until the astronauts already come home. So astronauts are in space for six months. So one astronaut has been up there for almost a year. And so once you finish working, you get it back inside the capsule and it, that capsule, the one on the left, lands on the land. But we use parachutes. So like you see here, I have parachutes here. That slows the capsule down when it lands on land. On the right is the American capsule, carries four astronauts. And that launches from Florida. 
and that takes about three hours to fly to the space station. So it doesn't take long to get to space, about three hours. Now, to feel like you're actually, flo you know, when you're floating inside a space capsule, that takes about eight minutes. So eight minutes, you actually are floating inside that capsule, but it still takes about three hours to get to it. And then it joins at another location, just like the Russian capsule, and it remains joined until the astronauts are ready to come back home. And when they're ready to come back home, they come back to land in the ocean very close to far and we use the parachute to land. And there is what Amanda is showing is part of the spacesuit. Yeah, when you put on the spacesuit, which is behind me, you have the pants with the boots attached, and you have the top part right here. But it's not the only thing you put on. The first thing you're gonna do is go, you're gonna be out for six hours or eight hours. And if you need to go to the bathroom, you have to wear diapers. Just like with babies, but you only use the diapers if you have to. You can use the toilet before you put on the spacesuit. So how long does it take to get dressed, Mr. DJ? 45 minutes. And, yeah, and when you come back in, it takes like 45 minutes too. So they, minutes. they wear the diaper like just in case. Cause, like you, know. you ever play in the wintertime, you go play out in the snow, you put on layers, you put on a vest, you put on a shirt, you put like one or two sweaters, you put on a jacket to make sure you're warm. We ask us to do the same thing. They put on layers upon layers to protect them from the cold of space and the hot temperatures of space. It gets to be like 248 degrees Fahrenheit, hot, like, hot like an oven in space in the daytime. In the nighttime, when it's cold. It goes to like minus 148 degrees. Those are cold temperatures. So you have to have protection, just like you go out playing the snow. We wear winter underwear. So I'm not quite sure if you guys wear that. But this is a long john. This is the uh, pants. And this is the top. This is what I wear when I'm playing the snow. And it's made of cotton, which is really good at absorbing, taking away the sweat. Because you're going to be in this space for six hours. And after a while, you start sweating. And then, so this prevents you from sweating. Then you put on a liquid cooling garment. So you see what the man is pointing to that gentleman's wearing? It's a very stretchy material. It's, it's like exercise wear. This is it. It's very stretchy. It's called like taffeta, uh, it's, it's like spandex. You see the two tubes sticking out there? That tube is sewn all up and down the legs, around the waist, around the arms, there's this long tube. And the reason we have a tube sewn onto the stretch of material is that we flow cold water through that tube. Where does that cold water come from? The back. So the back of the spacesuit, let me move back. You have the air tanks. Imagine a basketball, but something smaller than a basketball. There's four of those filled up with the air for you to breathe, just like the tanks, the divers were wearing, getting the water. At the bottom, there's two metal tanks filled with cold water. The cold water in those tanks flow through those tubes. So the cold water flows through those tubes. And because it's pressed very close to your skin, that cold water takes away the heat from when you're Sweating, besides the uh, long johns, the cold water takes away the sweat, to take, makes you cool. It's like running cold water on your face. Taking a towel, dipping in cold water, putting it on your face, we run cold water, that cools you down. Then you put on the space suit. And so you see the top part of the space suit, it's very heavy. It's about 315 pounds, it's heavy, it's heavy. But this is the computer, you need a computer. Why? Because you need to know how the spacesuit is working. What happens if it's not working? That's bad. So there's a little screen, like a TV screen on top that tells the astronauts, okay, you're running low there. It's time to get back into the space station. It will go beep, beep, beep. You have headphones, beep, beep, beep. So you're like, uh-oh, I need to get back. I'm running out of air. Also, it has switches for the, you have lights. Because uh, sometimes you work in the dark. It's very hard to see what you're doing. So you have a switch for your lights so you can see where you're working on. You have a camera, we have two small cameras. So if you ever get to know when there's a Scumbia spacewalk, go to NASA TV. You can just type in NASA TV, you can watch a spacewalk. It's six and a half hours. <laughs> I'm watching small bits, it's a long time because astronauts move very slowly in space. It's not like I'm, I'm working like I'm, um, on the ground. You gotta be very slow, there's a lot of sharp edges. You don't want to cut into the material. So you like look and move your stuff along. So this, this is to tell you how much oxygen is left, uh, how much batteries, why do you need a battery? Well, you need your cameras and your uh, flashlight. They need batteries, we have batteries in there. Also, when you breathe it out, you're breathing oxygen. 
you breathe out carbon dioxide, which is a gas. You don't want to breathe too much of that. It makes you dizzy. So air comes from the back, and it, there's a fan that blows the air down. So you breathe in oxygen, you blow out carbon dioxide. That goes, the, the carbon dioxide you breathe out, there are tubes that will suck that carbon dioxide and put it through a filter. So you don't breathe the same gas that you're breathing out. So, and the inside is very hard. You see how the hard, it's a hard shell. You ever see the boats in the water? Same plastic, it's called fiberglass. So it's plastic on the outside, so you can screw these on. But the outside, the fabric you see here, if I cut this open, it's made of 14 layers. Look at this, everybody. I have one, this material, this shirt is made of just this one layer, right? Look at the spacesuit. So if I was able to cut the sleeve open, there's like 14 different layers of material. This is Kevlar. This is on the outside. Any flying rocks will bounce off. It will won't make a hole in the spacesuit, so you'll be safe. And then you see these silver foil. You see there's one, two, three, four, and five. That keeps the heat out. Have you ever seen the adults in the summertime they put like a, a silver shield inside the windscreen to keep the heat from the sun from warming up the inside of the car? Sun shield, same as that. So that keeps the heat out. The heat gets sent back into space. And then you see this yellow thing, this material? Look inside the sleeve. You can see the yellow inside the sleeve. That's the balloon because without this, the air inside the suit can go through the holes out into space and you won't have any air to breathe. This is the balloon material. You want a balloon, the balloon, you blow up a balloon, you tie it, the air stays in the balloon, it doesn't leak out. That's what you have. This is the balloon that goes on the inside so the air stays inside, doesn't leak out. That's very important that you have this material. So those make up the different layers of the space suit, the top part. The pants comes with the boots. And you see the boots? See how smooth they are? They don't have, if you look at the bottom of your shoe, they have like, uh, like a, a, a grip. So you, when you walk, you don't slip on the floor. Look at this. I'm sorry, I gotta take this off. Here's the glove. You put the right glove on the right hand. Look at the glove and look at the sole. You see how this has more uh, like uh, ridges? So I can grab onto something, I won't slip. We're not using our feet. Look at the photograph of the astronaut. You see the front of him, but you don't, do you see his feet? No, because they're floating behind him. He doesn't use his feet. When he's space walking, he's not actually walking on top of the space station. He's using his hands to grab those handles and pull himself along. Just like a climber climbs up the mountain, the astronauts pull themselves on these, what we call handrails. Like the railings on the side of a building, when you go down the steps, you hold on to the railing. Similar to that, over 1,800 of those small railings up and down. So you just pull yourself along. But what happens if you let go? Are you going to go float into space? No. We, had a, we came up with an answer. This is like a belt. And a man is pointing to where it's attached. It's, it's, this is a carabiner. You can get it from a hardware store. Some people put keys on them and put them on their uh, pants. So this goes on the space. So you see, if I take this, I clip it on my uh, jeans, and this, I clip onto that handrail. So I just push this open and put it around that handrail. So that way, I'm attached. Um, if I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go too far. I can pull myself back in. If now I wanna go to another place, I unclip this off the handhold, handrail, uh, handhold, and then put it onto another one to the left of him, and then just pull on myself along. That's a long way of doing it. And in fact, if you look at the helmet, you see it's like a gold helmet. So I have a clear, a clear visor to work in the nighttime. But when it becomes day, it gets very bright the sun. I pull a second visor, a second glass down, which is the gold helmet. That cuts out the sunlight so it doesn't hurt your eyes. It's like when you go outside, you put on sunglasses to cut the sun out. And if you look closely, you can see the other astronaut that's reflected off the visor you always go out with, uh, with, in twos. You never go out uh, by yourself when you do a spacewalk. So if you get ill, you become ill and you can't get back inside the spacecraft, you can call to your uh, friend to come over and help you bring you back into the space station. Uh, so you have another astronaut to help you and also he's also doing jobs as well. 
you both are doing jobs for six, eight, eight hours. And then to the left, if you look at the photograph of the astronaut, he's waving, you see he's on the stand, like a platform, and that platform is attached to a robotic arm. If you're into robotics, come work for us. We love doing robotics at Gata. So there's a robotic arm, you've got the wrist, you've got the uh, elbow, you've got the shoulder. The whole arm will move down the side of the space station. You know where a train is, on a railway track, the train goes down a track. This whole arm is on, it's on a railway track. It slides up and down. And so you don't have to pull yourself along. You just tell the astronaut, the astronaut that's on that platform tells the astronaut on the inside, I want to go to down, further down. The other astronaut inside the space station has the steering wheel. He has the sticks that actually will move the whole arm up and down the side of the space station. So he doesn't have to pull himself along. So he's not going to be tired. And then he can do his job. And the arm can be rotated just like, a, yeah, just like a hand. Thanks, Amanda. So NASA has lots of different ways of, of keeping you safe. So there's always a backup plan for sure. But so let's talk a little bit about food. So guys, raise your hand if you have a favorite food or a favorite type of food you like to eat. Yeah, I know you, I don't need to say all the hands are raised because I know you all do. Okay. Yes. And so show me on your face how it makes you feel when you get to eat your favorite food or something that you really like to eat. Yes. Big smiles. Happy faces. Yes. Yes. Me too, for sure. And I think it makes a huge difference when you can eat something that you like because it puts you in a better mood. It makes you feel better. So NASA works really, really hard to make delicious food for our astronauts. I think like way back in the day, the food probably wasn't very good. But now we have a whole team. If any of you guys like to help cook in the kitchen, um, we have a team of people who create recipes and come up with this food for the astronauts and the astronauts can make special requests of things. Their family can send special food um, because you're up there for at least six months. You can't go to the store. You can't go pick something up from a restaurant. There is no delivery in space. Like it's not, it's not gonna happen. So you can only eat what they have up there. So they send lots of different options of things. Um, and so one of the ways we prepare it is so they cook it regularly. Like we have a regular like restaurant style kitchen. Um, then we put it in these portion control packs and then we de put it in a dehydrator, meaning we put it in this machine where it sucks all the water out of it, where it takes all the water out so it's dried. And then we put it in these clear packets like you see Mr. DJ is showing you and then kind of like in this picture here and then we suck all the oxygen out. And once we do that, using that preserves it so it can last for like two and a half years like that so that way we can make sure we always have enough food on the space station we send up a resupply mission about once a month or so so we'll send up more food we'll send up more water oxygen anything they need other other science experiments more clothes random stuff um, so we send up all this really cool food we also like to send up uh, fresh fruits and vegetables as we can um, and so one of the things that they're doing now is they're working on growing vegetables in space because in 2024, we're going back to the moon. We want to have long-term, um, we want to have a base on the moon for humans. And then that's going to help us travel to Mars, where we want to send humans to Mars in the 2030s. And like, it takes about six to nine months to fly to Mars. So could you imagine an apple sitting on your counter for six months? Oof, probably not. It began to grow by that point. So we need to figure out a way so that we can learn how to grow vegetables and fruit in space. So that our astronauts, when they're on Mars, they can have fresh stuff. I know I like fresh stuff. That's so DJ. I know, I get so jazzed. Uh, Mr. DJ, do you want to show us the food you have and tell us how they prepare it? For breakfast, it's going to be mini oat cereal. That looks like mini wheats to me. It's not bad. It's the same thing when you go to the, uh, adults go to the shop to buy a box of uh, mini wheats. It's the same thing. It's just that we put in a package and it's dry to begin with. So, you so that, much, one, that one has powdered milk in it, right? So you just add yeah, water and it turns to milk. I know. Well, I've had powdered milk. It's pretty good. All you yeah. have to do is add water. You go up, you add the water, and then you, oh, then you cut it. You don't need to cook it. You need to cut it, and you stick it on your, now you don't have a plate. Now at home, you, you dinner or your breakfast, um, your dinner or lunch on a plate. This is our plate. It's a tray, a food tray. And if you look at the back of it, uh, this, you see those two blue circles? That's Velcro. And these white squares are Velcro. There, it sticks, it doesn't float. And these straps, you put it over your, on your, over, around your leg. So you're putting your food on a tray around your leg. And you can go to your bedroom and eat. So you could go to where Amanda was talking about the cupola. Cupola. What is it, sir? Cupola. 
and you'd have your breakfast looking at it. I would love to have my breakfast looking down at the earth with my camera. So that's cereal. And then for lunch, I think I'm going to have chicken and rice. Same thing, you know, we buy from the grocery store. The rice comes in a box. You just add it to a pan, add water and cook it. Same thing with this. Put the water in the middle. There's a little foil there. Make a hole, put the water inside, get your hands, get the water inside the rice, get it mixed in. Then you put it on a hot plate, not an oven. It's a metal plate that heats up the food. Take it out, cut it with the scissor. You make a, like an X, open up the flaps, stick it on your tray, and then use your spoon or your fork. You just eat like that. And because it's wet, it sticks to the fork. Now, if for some reason the food comes off the fork, just grab it and put it in your mouth. No one's going to get upset. I mean, you got to have fun. I mean, I do that with the candy here. This is chocolate coated candy. We call, you call it m and NASA can't call it by its name. We call it chocolate coated candy. We cut this and we throw this at the, at the astronauts and they, they, they have a game like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, like swallowing it. You got to have fun. It's, you work hard, but you got to have fun. Spaghetti and meat sauce. Add the water, warm it up, cut it, eat it. I can, have, I can have my spaghetti, I can have my rice and chicken, I can have my candy, I can have my shortbread. I know, Amanda, I'm not eating healthy. Brownies. He's having candies and brownies. I'll eat, I'll eat all the candies. 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 I'll And the trouble is, you can't, I want a good sandwich. Lunchtime, I have a good sandwich. Trouble is, on Earth, I, if I eat the bread, any crumbs are going to fall on the floor because of gravity, right? Space, very little gravity, things float. So we can't eat bread in space. So what can we use? Tortilla. Tortilla is good. So we cut this out, take the tortilla out, put the food on, wrap it up and eat it. And the tortilla doesn't go bad. It takes, it takes a long time. For it. it can last a very long time. And do any of you like a lasagna or beef ravioli? Hands up. This is it. This is a beef ravioli and lasagna. We, it's different from this. You can see the food in here, but the Lasagna is in here, you can beef ravioli, if you like soup, if you like tomato soup, it comes in its side. That's my British accent. The soup is in there, cut it, I said warm it up. It's, you go warm it up, I'm gonna eat cold soup. Cut it and then use a uh, spoon to eat the soup. Now, salt and pepper, that's a problem. You have a regular pot, uh, salt, and, salt and pepper, salt shaker, you just, on earth, you just uh, put the salt and pepper on your food. In space, if you have a regular salt and um, pepper shaker, all that stuff, all that salt is going to be floating, all that pepper is going to be floating. It will go up your nose, you start a tissue, sneezing all the time. So to prevent that from happening, we mix the salt and pepper in the water. So when you push on the bottle, it squirts onto the food. So it doesn't float up the salt and pepper. So you have to think of ideas of you know, preventing from food from floating around. And drinks come in these packages, Sorry, no fizzy drinks. We get too many bubbles in the fizzy drinks. So we can only give you like chocolate breakfast drink, uh, strawberry drink, lemon and lime, orange drink. That's the only drink we can give you right now. No fizzy drinks. So no birthday cake because a birthday cake will break up in space. So for your birthday, we'll send you an ice cream, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla. We have a fridge on board the uh, space station. You keep ice cream for a long time, but no cake. And, so, you know, do we have any questions? I know we're coming right at our time. <laughs> Did you want to call on anybody for questions? Yeah, I can in a second. So Monica, Sophia, you would get no birthday cake this week. No birthday. We have two birthdays coming up. You guys wouldn't have any birthday oh, cake. No. We do have brownies and ice cream though. So you can Ooh. have, we have options for you. We got, does we got anybody, options. Does anybody have a question they would like to ask? They send up presents as well. Sophia, what is your question? How many months do you spend in the spaceship? So they usually spend about six months up there at a time. Some have gone longer and some have gone shorter. It kind of just depends on what I, the mission is. I think her question was, how long does it take to get up to the space center from the spaceship? Oh, three hours. Three, three hours, yep. When you're in that little capsule, you're only there for three hours. So it's a quick drive. To float and to start floating, eight minutes. That's when you start floating in space. In the spacecraft, sorry. Does, Serenity, what's your question? I believe the question goes scary detail in the spaceship. 
Serenity, your internet's low. Could you ask me and ask Mrs. Bins in the chat and I'll, I'll send it, say it, okay? Vanessa, what's your question? What happens when the rocket goes into the ocean? It floats. It sinks, the, the, the part of the rocket that's a Wait, you mean like the, the capsule, like where the people come back or like the rocket after it's left and the people are in space? I think she's talking about the rocket when it comes back. It makes a nice artificial sheree for the fishes. It oh, makes a yeah. home for the fishes. <laughs> That's a good way of saying because there's no more fuel in there, so don't worry. There's no more pollution. So it sinks, and then there's little fishes and and um, sea enemies. I call them. They build their homes on it. Yes. Kyla, what's your question? How do you go to the bathroom in space? How do you what when you're back from space? We, we get How do you go to the bathroom in space? Did you say how do you feel when you get back from space? So, some astronauts are wobbly because they have been in space for a long time, for like six months. When they get back, the legs are a little bit wobbly, like what we call sea legs. So what they do, they put them on a stretcher so they lie down horizontally. And it takes a while for them to get used to gravity. Sometimes they forget they're back down on ground and they throw something expecting to throw floating on Earth, but it comes back down. So that, it, it, the, the, yeah, they get weak, the bones, but they exercise. Every day they do two to three hours exercising to build up the bones, the, the muscle mass, because all that becomes weak in space because your heart doesn't have to work as much because you have very little gravity. So you had to exercise so that when you get back down, it doesn't take that long for you to get used to being back on the ground. But astronauts have been up there five times, three times. They can get back down the steps. They can walk around right away. But astronauts have been up for the one time, first time. It takes a while for them to get used to being, you know, with gravity, being able to walk, being able to see well, you know, to handle things. It takes a while. How awesome. Long? I have two more questions. We're gonna, I'm going to ask Serenities and then we'll ask Quinn's because okay. I know you guys have to get going. Um, is it scary repairing the spaceship when you're outside of, when you're outside? Is it scary? I don't know if I, it's probably at first you're like a little like, whoa, because it's so different from anything, but most astronauts that we, that I've talked to, and I think that Mr. DJ have talked to, like they say that it's, it's really cool. Um, and like, cause at first you're like, Whoa, but then you're like, I'm in space and like, there's nothing between me and like all this stuff. And like, there's just a really cool feeling. And cause you're floating too. Probably I won't do? be doing my job. I'll be stopped doing my job and looking at the earth all the time. It's like, oh, that's where I live. Oh, so <laughs> you got to concentrate while you're working. You send that to do a job. That is, you know, they are like flying the rocks, flying debris, but we are tracking them all the time. We'll make sure you won't get hit by any flying debris in space. So. Um, next question. I, I think, is Quinn still here? I think Quinn might have gotten logged off. I, I see her with her. I see up. Yes. Oh, you are there. Okay, Quinn, go ahead and ask your question. What would happen if the space station got too close to the sun? To the sun? Oh, it won't. It's really, really far. So if you imagine, um, okay, so imagine this is the Earth. The space station would be like right here, right, right on the edge of the Earth. And then you know how close the moon is, right? Like the moon seems like it's really close. But the moon, if the earth was this big, the moon would be 40 feet that way. So it's still really far. And then if you were gonna go to Mars, you'd have to go three miles that way. And then the sun would be like way farther that way. So it, it's totally fine. Like we're not gonna get too close to the sun at all. Yeah. That's a good question though. Cause it seems like everything's really close in space cause we see it so clearly. Um, but everything is definitely really far. So we're cool. They're safe. No All right. We do yeah. have science spacecraft that are going around the sun right now. They have special shielding so it won't melt. But they don't carry human beings. They carry science experiments. So we do have a spacecraft doing yeah, science. Really awesome. But. Boys and girls, we do have to let our guests go. I want to say thank you 
so much for joining us today. Boys and girls, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. You had awesome questions. It was great. To Thank talk to you. you. And I hope you have an amazing day. Ms. Bins, can I ask yeah. you a question, Ms. Bins? Yes. The picture of an elephant behind you, it has like a, like a, a pattern. Is that the Candy Parahara? Did you go to Sri Lanka? I, I actually don't know. One of my students threw that for me a long time ago, and so I hung it up on my wall. Very good. Very good, darling. I love that. There's a procession they have in Sri Lanka where they put oh. over. So it's like, hmm. That looks familiar. So. Awesome. Now I know some of you still might have questions. I'm going to have you send them to me and then maybe I maybe can pass them on to our friends and they can maybe email me back. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And boys and girls, can you stay on for a couple minutes and then we're going to talk really quick and we're going to be set. Thank you so much to our NASA okay. specialists. Thank, Thank you guys you. so, so Bye. much. You're welcome. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye.